here to desalinate me from that hour and 15 minutes of being bad at Super Auto Pets. We got some Islanders. Got some Islanders. Ah, oh, welcome back. Welcome back. So, like always, we're doing an hour of this, or until I lose. Whichever comes first, probably the hour. I hope it's the hour. If it's not the hour, then I can just pivot on to Animal Crossing early. Or Animal Crossing. Now, we're not streaming that yet, because I don't have a capture card that would work for it. And I don't want to buy a fucking capture card just to stream a game people aren't watching anymore. But I really want it. It's an excuse. I'm up in the air about it. I'm up in the air about it. Like, I, I do want to play some fucking Animal Crossing and... When I'm playing it on my own, I'm just like, man, I should be streaming this. Even if nobody watches, it's still like, it would make me feel somewhat more productive than just playing on my own. Oh. Oh, salt leaving the body. Just... <sighs> Oh, God damn it! that was so close. That was so close. It doesn't hurt until you start believing. It really doesn't. No, Stardew. We are doing an hour of Stardew later on. Maybe more. I've been, I've been having fun with Stardew. But I, I talk about this in Stardew Valley. My ability to... Talk? is destroyed by that game. I, I can't narrate over that fucking game for the life of me. It shuts my brain off. And not in an entertaining way. Not in like a, yeah, just chill vibes kind of way, but in like a, I become, I disassociate, I think, when I'm playing that. And I, t I don't know why. I'm just like, not in my fucking head anymore. And for some people, that's a desirable experience. Uh, no, no, not for me. I really hate disassociating. I really hate feeling not, uh, not conscious. No talkie when min-max farm game, basically. It's just so weird. Like, so many people love that fucking game because of how relaxing it is. I'm like, it just make my brain go quiet. And I guess that's good, but... It's, it's, like, not good. Brain go quiet is what brain do on drug. Me, me want process brain noise in a healthy way. Make peace with the brain noise. Not silence the brain noise. <laughs> silence brain noise! Uh, 13, 20, when... Oh, okie dokie. What can I, what can I go on about? Well, I had a lot of fun, uh, last night and yesterday evening playing Baldur's Gate 3 with my, uh, my good buddy, Dr. B's MD, or, or Brian. If farm game gives me analysis paralysis too. Absolutely. Like, I, I was talking about this yesterday when playing, like, Every time I'm doing something, I'm like, well, okay, if I'm doing this, it's going to take this amount of time, and if it takes this amount of time, uh, that comes out to, like, X dollars per minute or hour, and it would actually be more efficient to be doing this, but to do this, I need to do that, which is less efficient in the meantime, and I need to figure out how to make the most amount of money before the Spring Festival so I can buy all the strawberry seeds I can so I can plant all the strawberries, but then I need to level up to the point where I can turn those strawberries into strawberry seeds so it's actually an investment into the next spring because the dividends I can make next spring planting strawberries at the beginning are way better than the dividends I get if I just sell the strawberries I have now. <laughs> and, like, I love that it has that depth to it. I do. I love it. But also, like, my brain is just in full-on nerd calculator mode. And then, if I'm at it for too long, if I play the game for too long, I short the fuck out. It's just like, me no think anymore. I, I just... 
Give me, give me a bimbo pill. Give me a himbo pill. Just give me, give me <laughs> the option to turn. Make, just dumb me down a little. Just, just um, bimbo transformation dot jpeg. Give, give me that. That's what I need when playing Stardew, apparently. But yeah, Baldur's Gate's still fun. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3's not done. Not not at all done. Uh, it's still a lot of fun. And I, I just had fun playing with my friend. Who, you know, I see him like every week or so. But when, when uh, Brian and I first met, it was in college. And we don't, I don't really remember when we first met. We met for the first time several times, but when we really hit it off, my dude, my dude stayed over at my room, basically. I wouldn't even call it an apartment. For like a solid week, we were just playing Dragon Age Origins. And he would just fall asleep at his fucking computer. <laughs> night after night after night. And rather than walk home. And it it wasn't a long walk either. So, and then we moved in together not uh, not too long after that for, for reasons I've gone into before. Um, and we just like hung out all the fucking time playing video games or like doing <laughs> schoolwork or drinking or partying or whatever. And I, I really do miss just being around my friend. Just sharing space with him. I I would not trade living alone with living with him. I'd much rather live alone. Uh, living alone is so much better for me in so many ways. But I really miss that. So it's a lot of fun to be able to play games with him. In... Uh, Especially in RPG, because that's the kind of game we started playing when we first started hanging out. And, uh, I don't know, there's just something about it. Like, we've, we played a lot of MOBAs and other games together, but... Nah, it's, it's good shit. Also, Baldur's Gate 3 lets you do stupid shit like shove each other, and every time I was, like, turning to talk to chat or fucking with OBS... <laughs> My screen would just start shaking as my PC was being thrown around by the fucking bear he was playing. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I'm I'm really looking forward to that game being done. And I, I talked about this yesterday. I reached out to another friend, and I might reach out to some other folks talk, trying to figure out games to play and stream together, because, I you know, not a lot of my friends are into streaming. I think they'd be good at it. I really do. Uh... As good as me, probably. If not better. Brian, for example, I've been trying to get to do some fucking magic card opening streams because he plays the fucking roulette with, uh... With magic anyway. You might as well stream it. Might as well generate some sort of following or revenue out of that if you can. Additional revenue. He does it for the money and actually makes money off of it. But... Yeah. I... Uh, I don't know. I, I just want my friends to... I want to go back to the LAN party days, basically. I want to be able to play games with and around my friends. And just get the big old nerd shit together. I haven't played Dota, ever. I played Dota when it was a mod. And then never again. I... And I didn't play Dota because of any hype. I played, like... The original Defense of the Ancients map on, uh, what was that? Wrath of the Witch King? It was Warcraft 3. I forget what, what expansion pack it was. I played the original, and I'm like, this is confusing. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. I was much more into uh, Dota likes, basically, uh, lane defense kind of games, uh, custom maps. Making money from magic? Isn't there laws against that? Don't tell Big Wizard, alright? Don't like Big Wizards, no. He's gonna get... 
The fucking wizard's hip squad, hip squad, hit squad coming after him. We we live pretty close to wizard's HQ here, so <laughs> gotta keep it quieter. They'll come a knocking. <laughs> uh, Starcraft and Warcraft three were uh, a hell of a thing back in their heyday. Like, Brood War had so many horny maps. Like, um, that were just. <laughs> if I'm remembering this right, just like the map art or the, uh, the mini map was. The map was laid out in such a way that it was like a really, by modern day, pixelated nude or. Um, like, yeah, yeah, I, you, you kids today, you goddamn zoomers don't know how good you have it with the wide accessibility of pornography. You don't understand what it was like to slowly download porn only to have the, uh, yes, download porn only to have the, uh, fucking <laughs> dial up cut out. You don't know, man. You don't know, the, the horniness and the extremes that people used to have to go for, lengths that people used to have to go for, just the, the most base satisfaction would seem ludicrous by today. Like the whole idea of like forest porn, which is a thing I've never experienced, but is, been has been repeated as being a phenomena of people going into the woods and finding boxes full of pornography. That used to be a thing. That used to be, apparently, a somewhat relatable <laughs> occurrence. Which blows my fucking mind. So Zoomers, like, imagine not having porn just, like, shoved at you all the time. And, and like, it used to be a good, good, like, a large percentage of pornographic or adult material online was a trap. The vast majority of it had spyware of some variety or malware of some variety. Just so, so much of it. Nowadays, you can't shake a whatever without seeing a titty. Back, back in my day, back in my day, it used to be we had to, you know, go uphill both ways in the snow. And God forbid you have any fetishes. God forbid you be anything except, like, straight, white dude who wants to see a rather unattractive guy bang in a uh, traditionally attractive lady in a rather vanilla fashion focused primarily on his satisfaction and power trip. God forbid you want to see anything but that. Oh, yeah, like... Uh, my, my last relationship, I... When we talked about porn early on, it's as you do, uh... Like, what are you into? We, we talked about for a while, like, how hard it is to find good stuff, particularly, like, ethical good porn. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's harder than you might like. But compared to how hard it used to be, dude, it is not hard to find good, honest pornography. <laughs> In this in this modern era, it's it's really not. God, how, how did we live back then? It's funny as hell seeing this uh, ethical porn as a statement. Indeed, oh, it's it's totally a thing. Sex work can be totally ethical if the uh, workers are paid fairly, if they are granted protections by the organization that they work for or working with, just like any other industry, it can totally be ethical. But 
the pornographic industry in the United States has had a long history being wildly exploitative and wildly uh, abusive. Yeah. It's, it's an important distinction to make, right? Yeah. There's a... Just like when I was young, and for some reason my fucking generation hyped up the 80s, and how much the... Ugh, I wish I could go back then. Zoomers today are doing with the 90s, and I I promise you, Zoomers, you don't want to go back to the 90s. I, I swear to you, with my heart of hearts, you don't want to go back there. It... It was not a... It was fine. But I don't want to go back to the 90s. And I lived through it. Like, even even just, like, you know, somewhat ghibli being like, haha, porn was hard to get. But it wasn't just that. Like, any um, expression or representation of anything thought as deviant or other... Now, people, I think young people really take for granted the queerness of social media and the accessibility to online queer spaces I think they take that for granted but in the 90s in the early mid 2000s even uh, I mean even now it can be difficult to find certain queer spaces that feel safe for certain people like uh, regardless of the platform you can find all kinds of homophobic transphobic folks out there but that used to be so much more difficult so much more difficult. I and just like anything else, when when we're talking about or thinking about nostalgia for the good old days, it's part of what makes it so dangerous. Is it erases in like the public consciousness the lived realities of the the difficulties of that time <laughs> for people who were seen as other and treated as other at the time, and it still are, but were particularly at the time. Like, I wish I could go back to the 90s so I could just be, like, a very smart kid and... I don't know. For me, for me, anytime I think about going back in time, particularly, like... Ooh, wish I could go back and do it all again. It's always like a power trip thing, right? Like, uh, oh, you know, I could change this or stop this or yada, yada, yada. It, like, ethically, mm, time travel, even if it were within your own lifetime, that's a, that, no one should have that power, right? But it, it, it has an allure. It definitely does. Oh. Pop, 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 pop. Okay. So, with this is a weird bit with these statues. I know I don't talk about Islanders when I'm playing Islanders, but I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna break that habit here. Just just for a quick moment. I like putting the statues like here, here, and here, so I can double up or triple up on the buffs early on. I don't really know if that's the best way to do it. In fact, I'll, I'll level with you. I'm fairly sure that's not the best way to do it. And one of the reasons I don't talk about Islanders when I'm playing Islanders is... I'm sure there is a small, very dedicated community out there who try real hard to get the high score and they care about it a lot and they're very competitive and I just... I don't, I don't give a shit. I, I don't care. Um, and I don't want to open up the, you know, the floodgates for backseat. I don't mind backseating in any game that I play. I really don't mind backseating. If I care about the game. But I, I play Islanders for the vibes and the weird way that it allows me in, in a really exceptional way that I can't quite put my finger on why or how. It makes it really easy for me to just go off on tangents in a very comfortable, low-effort way. <laughs> Emphasis on low-effort, haha. <laughs> but really, I, I think it's quite cool. That's why I play the game, because I, I like the vibes. I don't, 
I don't play it to be good. I don't play it to be good. Hearts of Iron 4, I'll play it to be good. Youth 4, I almost said 3, I'll play it to be good. Victoria, I, all the fucking strategy and paradox games, yeah, I'll try hard those. I will. And then I'll get <laughs> flustered and embarrassed when I do bad, but I don't. I don't care. I don't care here. It's cool to not care, but also it's very cool to care. I was I was born in the early 90s, so I was around for grunge and the the genre of punk where, you know, my United States of whatever was kind of the, the rule of the land at the time. Like, ah, I don't care. Whatever. Whatever. And I definitely had a whatever phase as a, unfortunately, as a youth. That might be one of the uncoolest things ever characterized as cool. Mm, I don't care, and me not caring is very cool. It, no, no, not not at all. Caring about shit is cool. Having passions and interests and, you know, uh, uh, raison d'etre resonate with people and they help us connect with one another just being like eh, I don't care about anything okay very cool you you go fuck off and be alone you enjoy that and you know I I have no illusions that it was something particular to the 90s I know kids today and unfortunately all all ages of people today can still do the same thing but it used to be just fucking everywhere is a popularized, uh, cool dude thing. And I... Why? Why would you put that toxin into the world? Why would you put that poison into the world? Nine, nine, yeah, we're not getting anything better than nine out of this. Just keep stacking these, uh, stacking these up. Mm -hmm. I I feel like I should be more excited about Halloween. I've never really celebrated Halloween very enthusiastically. I've mentioned this a few times, but as a as a kid, like eleven or twelve, when Halloween hit, I decided I was too old to celebrate Halloween. And I could never have fun with it ever again. That I had outgrown it. And I tried... I, I was one of those kids that decided, okay, I gotta grow up. Gotta grow up. I gotta be an adult. I gotta be mature and take everything, like, very seriously. And... I don't know. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It, it's probably a reaction to trauma. It's probably a, an attitude that youth put on if they feel like they're not being paid attention to, or they want more autonomy or respect or a voice, uh, a way to try to gain access to the, the privileges and respect that they see, at the bare minimum of respect they see adults paying one another, trying to gain access to that through parroting the behaviors that they see and hear described as being adult or mature behaviors, it was probably that, right? Um... Because I definitely, I wanted to be respected. I, I was so frustrated as a kid that children were not seen as fully human and still aren't, especially in the United States. Like, youth do not enjoy the same rights as adults. In so many different circumstances. And having that awareness that you live as a marginalized um, identity, or, I mean, is child, is youth really an identity? I don't know. That's that's why I kind of paused after marginalized, because I'm like, eh, you know, you outgrow youth. You don't outgrow, like, race or sexual orientation. So I, I want to be careful with how I'm describing this, because I don't want to make undo or 
you know, inelegant parallels here because I appreciate it. Not the same thing at all. Um, but, you know, having people not listen to you or respect you or value what you have to say because, ah, you're just a kid. It was so frustrating then, and it's still frustrating now to see it done to smart kids. Because that's not a response to somebody's beliefs, somebody's uh, attitude, somebody's position, somebody's ideas. It's a dismissal based off of a lack of experience, and it's not a constructive dismissal. You know, you can say, hey, you know, you haven't been at this very long I think a little bit of experience will give you some perspective on this, or here's a way that when I was young, or when I wasn't very experienced at this thing, I was lacking in perspective. Like, here's some stuff I learned. Like, there's a lot of respectful ways and helpful ways and instructive ways to, to broach that issue. That is not, not the way that conversation is typically had. I... I recall um, the UN had, well, it's been a minute now, Universal Charter, uh, UN Declaration of Children's Rights. The UN Declaration of Children's Rights was not passed. Um, no, no, this is the one, this isn't the one I'm thinking of. Um, this one passed. There's one that the United States um, did not ratify. There it is. The United Nations. Fuck off, Washington Post. Okay, you know what? I'll open this in an incognito tag tab. It, you you made me do this. You made me do this. Ads? Ads? Oh my god. I... Fuck the media. Uh, the United States will not ratify the United Nations Child Rights Treaty. Still haven't. Still haven't. It, it's been... It's been over 30... 35... been 30... What? 32 years? Since 190 members of the United Nations passed the Convention of the Rights of a Child. Landmark agreement, uh, one of the most ratified in history. But the it was never ratified by the United States, so it doesn't take effect in the United States. Even though it passed, we are the only member of the United Nations not to ratify this. The only fucking one. Because child labor in the United States is still legal. Still legal. You just need parental permission, and it's really a state's right issue. Uh, it varies by state by state. Um... It sets out civil, political, economic, social, health, and cultural rights of children. Keep in mind, this was uh, signed in 1989. Rights enshrined in 89 kind of pale in comparison to the standards that we would set for rights today, right? Um, nations that have ratified it, ratified it are bound by international law. And this is the larger part of why the United States isn't doing it. Is that we don't want to ever be accommodated or... Uh, accommodated um accountable very different word accountable to anyone else uh boop, 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 boop. jurisdictions implementing the convention require compliance with cu child custody and guardianship laws as every child has basic rights including right to life their own name and identity to be raised by parents within a family or cultural grouping to have a relationship with both parents even if they're separated uh, it obliges states to allow parents to exercise parental responsibilities, like uh, paid leave, um, which we don't have here. Convention also acknowledges children have the right to express their opinions, which is not a thing so much in the United States. You don't have that right as a child. Have those opinions heard and acted upon when appropriate. That's not a thing so much in the United States. That's really circumstantial in the United States. Be protected from abuse or exploitation. Child abuse is, you know, very hard to protect against whole cloth, but we don't do much of anything in the U.S. Uh, have their privacy protected. Requires their lives not be subject to excessive interference. Convention also obliges signatory states to separate legal representation for a child uh, and any judicial dispute occurring 
concerning their care and ask child's viewpoint be heard. Convention forbids capital punishment for children. Uh, it's an obligation of all state parties. Move quickly to prohibit and eliminate all corporal punishment, all corporal punishment, and other cruel or degrading forms of punishment for children. The United States is in opposition of this. We're not killing kids, right? There's no capital punishment, but we have juvenile detention facilities, and we those are quite often just like so many uh, other prison facilities, jails in the United States. Those are parts of the prison industrial complex and an apparatus for the profit of corporations. Furthermore, the physical abuse of children as discipline in the United States is a widespread maintained thing. Uh, private schools, such as Catholic schools, still practice corporal punishment, um, and so on and so on and so on. And forms of degrading forms of punishment for children, uh, public humiliation, social humiliation, things like that, wildly common. Uh, Article 19 of the convention states all parties must take all appropriate legislative, administrative, social, and educational measures to protect a child from all forms of physical or mental violence. We certainly don't do that with our uh, gun laws, lack of firearms restriction, and firearm control in the United States, or lack of fire firearms education. I don't want to take guns away from people. I just want to make people educated if they have guns. I want to make sure people safely secure their guns. I want to get rid of it's guns in schools generally i want to get rid of cops in schools uh it makes no reference to corporal punishment committee's interpretation of this section to encompass a prohibition on corporal punishment has been rejected by several states including australia canada and the united kingdom wow huh, more people in the anglosphere european court of human rights has referred to the convention when interpreting the european convention on human rights uh and so on and so on and so on but the United States, the United States played an active role in drafting it, but has not ratified its claim that American opposition to the convention stems primarily from political and religious conservatives. Yeah, for example, the Heritage Foundation sees a civil society in which moral authority is exercised by religious con congregations, family, and other private associations is fundamental to the American order. And they're right. They're absolutely right. Fundamental to the American order is a civil society in which moral authority is exercised by religious family, religious congregations, family, which just means religious congregations, and other private associations. It's maintaining the... Uh, cultural reproduction and social reproduction of the faith first Christian movements and organizations and uh, got denominations there we go of the United States like the Southern Baptist Church like uh, the Mormon uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints um, etc etc and because they are and have been such major political players that's a big part of this. Uh, most notably, at the time, several states permitted the execution and life imprisonment of juvenile offenders, a direct contraven contravention of Article 37. Um, juvenile executions were unconstitutional as of 2005. I was 13. Uh, court held that mandatory sentences of life without parole are unconstitutional for juvenile offenders, so it took until 2012 for us to get that nine years ago state laws regarding the practice of closed adoption may also require an overhaul in light of convention's position that children have a right to identity from birth during a 2000 campaign barack obama described the failure to ratify it as embarrassing and promised to review the issue but as president of course being obama he never did no president of the united states has submitted the treaty to the united states senate require requesting its advice and consent to ratification since the united states signed it in 1995 the united states has ratified two of the optional protocols of the convention the optional protocol on the involvement of children in armed conflict <laughs> yeah but we'll we'll still have army recruiters on twitch uh Totally not preying upon children. Nah, nah. And the optional protocol on the sale of children, child prostitution, and child pornography. It's... Ugh. I, it's just unconscionable. The United States is... Fucking cultural hell. So that, I hope that's a fun little insight. If you, if you weren't aware of that, now you are, and uh, you're welcome, or I'm sorry. The U.S. has been a backward, backward state for a long, long time. And the the fact that 
seemingly today the United States is in decline. It's just those chickens coming home to roost. It's nothing new. But what we are seeing in the United States is the consequence of decades, centuries of intentional policy, stubborn and intentional neglect, and a deeply entrenched and class conscious capitalist class. Fuck them kids, am I right? Like, if you, if you have been, uh, uh, keeping abreast of this whole nobody wants to work anymore garbage that employers are going on about, which you might be keened into, uh, places are hiring teenagers as young as 13 to work at them, 12 in some parts of the country. Granted, again, I'm fairly sure you need parental consent at that age, or at least you did in Indiana, where I grew up, they're they're paying 13-year-olds $5 an hour. And, like, it's not... <laughs> it's, it's just... It's fucking insane. It's fucking insane. Like, if you're 13 to 14 years old, you'll get $5 an hour. If you're 14 to 16, you'll get $6 an hour. Like, they really try to make it like, oh, you stay with us and you grow up and you get you you get more as you grow up. Like, playing off of this, uh, like, really manipulative, infantilizing thing that we do with children in this country. Like, ooh, as you get older, you just start getting more and more rights, more and more recognition, regardless of individual merit, regardless of individual ability. Like, I've known some 12-year-olds who are fucking geniuses and would perform better than most managers I've worked with or under. Not saying they should be managing, just saying that age is no evidence of competence or worth. And I'll, I'll level with you. I think kids, if they are working jobs, even part-time jobs, they deserve 15 an hour. They deserve 20 an hour. They deserve as much as anyone else because their labor, if it's being utilized, is clearly as valuable as anybody else's labor. They deserve their fair fucking cut. Well, Alex, you know, didn't, didn't burger expensive? I don't give a shit. Fuck Burger King. Fuck McDonald's, fuck fast food. If you can't stay in business while providing a livable wage to your employees, you don't deserve to be in business. If you if you can't restructure an industry to work for people instead of being parasitical to those people, I don't want you to exist. I hate so much this uh rhetoric that people have been taught by the news mostly that oh well that's that's a that's a kid's job you know um, that's just for part-time students or whatever why the fuck do they deserve less than you why why do they deserve less than anyone else oh lack of experience okay well then start them out at a livable wage and then move everybody up to a more than livable wage. You don't have to... This fucking crabs in a bucket mentality that so many particularly conservatives have in the United States is... So stupid. You don't need to tear down other people around you in order to somehow climb out of this. Even millionaires are closer to destitution, poverty, and homelessness than they are to ever becoming a billionaire. If you think that you're going to make it rich, Statistically, you're wrong. Statistically, you're absolutely wrong. And no, you're not going to beat those odds. A few exceptional cases seemingly beat those odds, but they're intentionally allowed to do so, and in fact uh, facilitated in doing so by the existing billionaire, millionaire, capitalist class in order to maintain this facade of class mobility doesn't actually exist but exists as an idea which is used as a mode of social control and I... oh dear, I'm I'm so tired <laughs> the 
There's a 24 here. I saw that. Just give me the 24, dog. Oh, shut up if you give me the 24. Give me, give me the 24. I'll take the 22. Whatever. I don't care about high score, and we're already at 40 minutes. We're already 40 minutes, but I'm. Um, I haven't placed any houses, so that uh, that may be part of why my score is, <laughs> score isn't exactly popping off yet. I have 16, like 18 unplaced houses. Yeah, maybe, maybe that that may be a small piece of the puzzle. That's not gonna fit here. Or here. This is full up now. Okay. Boo, boo, gold mine. Mm, where, is, where is my gold mine? Is it here? Did I cover it up here? It's not a fucking be. Oh god, it's way the fuck over here. Yep. I should be paying attention to where the gold mine is when I'm placing these uh these down. Because I'm gonna wanna place this kind of in the middle. And you wanna have these closer to that so the gold mine is actually worth more to get a 30 off of that and instead I'm only getting 50 <laughs> a mere 50 what has become the economy like all these motherfuckers talking about mm, we're having an inflationary crisis yeah man I wonder how we could fix that golly how do you want to take money out of the economy if only there were a few people whose personal okay just fall over something in the kitchen that's cool personal amount of capital and personal wealth was so highly overinflated and exaggerated that removing it or taxing it or seizing it nationally could be used to address global hunger climate change public health care oh just like a wide array of things if only we had a <laughs> had something like that wouldn't, that wouldn't that be crazy wouldn't that be crazy if there were a fucking magic bullet wouldn't that be nuts but alex they, they don't literally have billions of dollars in the bank i know but they have billions in assets Almost trillions in assets in some cases, and you can seize those assets. And if those assets actually have the value that they're marked at, then th there you go. There you go. Because the government doesn't actually have like, like, money. Fiat currency is based on nothing. It's based on power. It's based on authority. It's based on control. M money don't mean nothing. Money don't mean nothing. It, like... I'm just... Uh... It's not even, like, really worth getting mad about, because people who get really fired up about things that they half understand, that they've heard repeated on Fox News or MSNBC or CNN, they don't go in to actually like study the things that they're hearing about or look into them in any consequential manner they don't second guess their sources of information or go to the primary sources or try to expand upon what they've been told they just kind of accept it whole cloth get mad about it and then blame other people who are told by a different media corporation which is owned by the same conglomerate at the top the, the, they're the baddies. Uh, they're the reason we have problems. They're the dummies. I'm smart. No, you're all fucking idiots. If your politics are not revolutionary, if your politics are not actually transformative, you are a pawn. <laughs> you, you are a pawn that doesn't know it's a pawn. You are just believing that people are gonna care for you that are vested in not caring for you. You, th you fools. <laughs> you utter and complete fools. Ah, uh, I, I'm kind of ignoring the news today because the, the fucking infrastructure bill is being voted on again in the house and Chances are progressives might not veto it again, which is their only fucking leverage to get anything done with the actual meaning part, meaningful part of the bill. Get the lever. The, the infrastructure bill is a goddamn joke. It's a stimulus package for um, corporations. It doesn't really help people 
in any way, and it doesn't it doesn't allocate enough for high speed rail or even maintaining existing rail networks in the United States. It doesn't actually do much for providing state or federal funds for maintaining expansion of existing infrastructure. It's it's all well, way too much of the money is going towards corporations and going towards stimuluses for businesses and this stupid dumbass neoliberal model where oh well we just provide tax breaks and then they'll have a profit motive to do the right thing they won't do the right thing <laughs> you fucking idiots since the 1980s and these uh neoliberal spending and fiscal policies became mainstream the wealth disparity in the United States has skyrocketed. You're not going to do anything with these positive incentives. You can't just keep doing things with a carrot. You also need the stick. You need to have federal or national authority that's willing and able to tax big businesses, to tax wealthy individuals, and to assign national priorities to create national work programs to create national education programs to federalize businesses and organizations which are clearly in need of federalization that are mismanaging things that have been mismanaging things that are abusing people they're taking advantage of people etc 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 it's not like these ideas or proposals or suggestions are all that revolutionary. They're not. If they were revolutionary, they'd be vested in uh, disempowering the capitalist class completely by dissolving the Senate, empowering the House of Representatives, increasing the amount of representatives, um, by doing away probably with the executive branch, maybe even the judicial branch altogether. You want you want a revolutionary. You want a real re redistribution of power. Um, you can't do that really through reform alone. Reform is only ever going to make world the world or our country a slightly more livable place for people that it's deeply inhospitable to. Which I think is uh, as a short term goal. Uh, it's an honest one, right? Is it enough? No. Will it ever be enough? Fuck no. But it's something, and I can respect something. Uh, can I identify strongly with it's something? No. No. I... I was watching Left Flank Vets this morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon, whatever. Uh, today as I was eating a breakfast? Patching something? I don't know. Getting ready for being a functional human being today. And Erica, one of the members of the, the group, <laughs> mentioned or talked about, you know, somewhat jokingly, but kind of seriously, she thinks she hates Nancy Pelosi more than any other elected official. Kind of there. I'm kind of there with her. Like, Nancy Pelosi talking about the provisions in the bills that are being discussed about climate change. And she, this motherfucking ghoul was describing climate change action, which the bills do nothing. They provide money for Tesla and other electric car companies as a stimulus. That's that's all they fucking do and they're acting like that's meaningful in some goddamn way and it's not it's not it's not. I promise you Elon Musk does not need more money. What he needs is a goddamn therapist and to have somebody take Twitter away from him for a while. But uh, she described it as being it's about jobs, it's about health, it's about values. No, bitch! It's about an existential threat that is threatening millions of lives! <laughs> it's about the future survival of our species. It is not a values thing. It's about health, sure, I guess, in like a broad sense. Sure as fuck ain't about jobs! 
the hell is wrong with it? She uses this coded language like she's talking to conservatives. Like she, the language she uses is, and the rhetoric she uses, it's speaking to a very particular audience, to a capitalist audience, to a wealthy audience, because a wealthy audience wants to hear, oh yeah, no, this, this is, it's a very lib wealthy audience, right, obviously. It's about my health. It's about the health of my children. And oh yeah, you know, it's about good jobs. No! <laughs> No, it's about this very real thing that you're not talking about for some reason because you're just... Well, because you and every other goddamn career politician is deeply in the pocket of fossil fuel industries. I, I have family in San Francisco. I don't understand how they keep electing... That goddamn ghoul to office. She is a monster. She is an inhumane, tasteless, tactless monster. She has no real sympathy or empathy towards the working class, towards the poor, towards anyone that's not of her <laughs> income bracket. She will put on all the most cringe performances with kente cloth or saying that george floyd was a hero or a martyr but not actually doing anything meaningful towards addressing police brutality or the rampant systemic racism in this country nah just like we see you we hear you yes queen that's that that god Damn it. I hate it so fucking much. So fucking much. Worse, I think, are the people who buy it. Or the people who genuinely think she's trying to go do good. Or the people who think she's genuinely... <laughs> not just a grifting fucking monster. I... How fucking dumb are you? Come on, dog. People who are not deeply disillusioned with the American process and political mechanisms arch <laughs> I don't get it I don't get it how are you so ignorant how are you living in such deep denial if these people cared about you if Joe Biden really wanted to help you that bill or the uh COVID relief package earlier in the year would have been $2,000. Would not have been 1200 because you got 800 earlier. Joe Biden would uh, do something about student loan relief and student debt relief. Nah. He'd do any of these things that he promised in running for office. And he only promised these things in running for office because Bernie had promised them. People liked Bernie's policies, so he took Bernie's policies, whittled them down to about uh, a sixth or a fifth, or in some cases a tenth of their proposed value, and said, okay, this is the compromise we're willing to do. So he compromised even before he got into office. And then he goes up against moderates like Joe Manchin, or Republicans, and if you've compromised before you even bring something to the fucking table, you're not actually interested in getting it. What you're interested in is putting on the display and the act that you are doing something that you do care. It's just those meanies on the other side of the aisle that don't want you to have nice things. No. No. It's you, dude. It, it's you. It's you, you are entirely complicit. Motherfucking Joe, fundamentally nothing will change Biden. And God, running with Kamala Harris, uh, Kamala, Kamala Harris, girl boss extraordinaire, California's number one cop. Yeah, um, okay. All right, DNC, I guess, guess you would rather just they're they're really doing this Hillary Clinton bullshit again, where they're running an unpopular woman, or they're setting up an unpopular woman to run for president, 
and she's gonna lose. And then they're gonna piss and shout and moan that she lost because she's a woman and anyone who didn't vote for her is misogynist. And how this is just another demonstration of how the other people are bad and they're good. And next time you better vote for them or you're just not woke. You're just not okay. And that's not what America's about. Rather than having somebody, like, even fucking Elizabeth Warren would be better, and she's a goddamn snake. Now, I've talked a lot about how I don't like Elizabeth Warren and why, mostly because of the, um, insistently claiming that she's a woman of color, i.e., uh, First Nations person, and she's not. She's an East Coast woman who was told that she's, like, 1-8 or 116 Cherokee and just fucking believed it and just kept repeating it and people believed her and now it's so deeply ingrained that people just keep repeating it even though it's demonstrably untrue she's not culturally a member of any nation or tribe so far as I'm aware and she wasn't willing to take like a Ancestry testing, like the whole idea of blood quantum is pretty fucked up, right? So I'm not going to get into that. Blood quantum is, unfortunately, the way that uh, qualification for tribe membership is maintained in a lot of the United States. Just some fucking coastal live rich white lady lawyer. And she would have been miles better than Kamala. But we're not getting her. We're, we're probably getting Kamala Harris in 2024. <laughs> I'm not voting for her. I'm sure as fuck not voting for her, even if it's Trump. Even if it's Trump, because you know what? End of the day, the Trump administration has done more for me than the Biden administration. And I'm lower class, queer, and a socialist. Biden made a lot of nice promises and then means tested the hell out of them so that what's being proposed right now doesn't actually really help anyone. Certainly doesn't do a goddamn thing for me. Even the easiest thing, like a $2,000 check instead of a $1,200 check, fuck that up too. Meanwhile, like, Jesus Christ, under... under the Trump administration, I got substantially more because, and yes, it's fair to say and fair to blame the Republicans in their part for being intentionally just not signing off on anything that Biden or the Democrats want to do. Totally, totally fair. They're playing politics. Biden is not playing politics. Biden is doing the Democrat thing, being like, ooh, ooh, those meanies won't let us have a good time. Aren't they so bad? And they're not actually organizing or using their own political party to do anything and instead just finding the odd people to blame for issues that are ultimately their responsibility. I'm not voting a fucking cop into office. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not voting for a blue fascist. No. No. Kamala Harris... Yeah, I will never vote for her for president. I'd rather vote for Bernie. Even if Bernie's dead, I'll vote for him again. I didn't vote for Biden either. I voted for Bernard Sanders. Even though, you know, obviously it was a bad faith third party vote. I don't care. It reflects my values. It reflects my values. And honestly, Seattle's so... And Seattle and Washington are so far away from the rest of the country. Like, federal politics matter. Kinda. Sorta. Sorta. But states' rights are so deeply enthroned and empowered in this country that they, that they don't really matter. Federal, federal authority willingly, willfully short cut, or, uh, cuts itself off. Uh, yeah, hey, anyway, uh, thinking about capitalist, or <laughs> capitalist, yes, potato, potato. Politics is always great. Um, everything is fine. 
Everything is fine. Totally fine. 30. I mean, we're we're done here. We, we're done here. I cap out here. We're over an hour anyway, and I said I'd go until an hour, but I knew we'd lose sooner than later, so there we go. There we fucking go. Oh, bah, bah, bah. So that's, um, that's gonna be Islanders for the day. Some days, Islanders is like therapy for me. Other days, Islanders is, uh, you know, getting mad in therapy, screaming into the void. That That's still legitimate. Wait, that's still legitimate. Um, legitimate, wait, legitimate, wait. Uh, that's still, really, and I mean this seriously. Um, it's a positive thing you can do and get out of therapy is, like, actually feeling things, expressing your feelings, exploring those feelings. So, uh, the joke that this is just me giving myself therapy. Oh, I'll grant it that, right? I'll grant it that. But, uh, YouTube, anyway, I'm gonna keep streaming on Twitch. We're hopping into Stardew Valley next for at least an hour. And God knows what after that. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, have a fact. This is it for today. At least until tomorrow, I'm gonna say toodaloo. Take care. See you then. Bye-bye.